What is up DS3 TV? We are going to look at a channel that we have not looked at in a very long time. This one is the optimal number of arms. Um, so yeah, this is going to be pretty good. And it's by uh, Tier Zoo. Yeah, we haven't watched Tier Zoo in a good while. So yeah, this is going to be a good video. And let's get into it. And... Oh uh, yeah, let's see what's the number optimal number of arms. I mean, maybe it could be eight, maybe it could be two, maybe it could be somewhere in between, or even more. Who knows? Let's get into it and play. All right, everyone, let's talk cephalopods. So since they're a really unique build, some of you might not know how to actually get to them on the character select screen. Almost all of the builds we've discussed so far have been vertebrates, but to get to this build you'll actually need to select the invertebrate section and then find the Mollusk Guild. From there you can join one of three clans, the Bivalves, the Gastropods, and the Cephalopods. You're going to go ahead and choose Cephalopod because they're by far the strongest build in the guild. Now here's where you get to make a decision. How many arms do you want? You might think this is an arbitrary decision. But what you choose here actually determines a lot of the class specific skills you have available as well as some of your base stats. So for this video I want to outline how important this decision is by examining the two available classes, their most optimized builds, and their most unique abilities. So anyways, when building a cephalopod, you're offered a choice. 10 arms or only 8? Let's say you choose 10. Choosing 10 unlocks the squid subclass. The squid is the premier ocean intelligence power and mobility hybrid. It's got reasonably high intelligence, and more importantly, extraordinary power because of its armor-piercing beak and one of the top grabs available in the ocean servers. Its grab has the added bonus of inflicting damage when the grab target struggles in an attempt to break free. Squids back up this powerful offensive kit with high mobility, which means if a squid player wants to pick a fight, escape is not an option. I mentioned intelligence briefly, but I think it's worth discussing further. The squid's intelligence is exemplified by one of its attributes, which is only available to high intelligence builds, the ability to hunt in packs. Pack hunting makes squids a genuinely oppressive force in the territory that they control. It's worth pointing out that I'm talking about the best of many squid builds, the Humboldt squid. But that's not to say that this is the only playstyle available to squid players. You can opt for a tank build by selecting either the giant or colossal squid. This build also allows you to enter the deepest ocean servers, areas of the game very few players ever get to see. If you prefer stealth-based builds, you can also try out the Bobtail Squid, which is one of the only builds which uses light to hide. Because it emits light, the squid avoids casting a shadow against starlight or moonlight, which counterintuitively makes it one of the most stealthy nocturnal builds. Fun fact, the squid can't activate this stealth ability on its own. It's actually a buff applied by a support class from Kingdom Bacteria called Vibrio Fisheri. Oh, that's insane. I did, okay, so yeah, that's a form of mutual, like that's like a mutual beneficial um, organism, right? Because that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a parasite because parasite would mean that they would leech off of them, but that's mutually beneficial. But I'm getting off track. Squids have high power and mobility and can also have high HP, stealth, and intelligence, depending on the build. However, if you want a premier stealth and intelligence build, you're going to want to choose 8 arms. And can't they grow back their arms anyway? Instead of 10. This unlocks the Octopus class. Octopuses have the second highest intelligence of all marine builds, outplaced only by dolphins. This high intelligence unlocks attributes such as tool use, complex structure navigation, and adaptive problem solving. And while this is all impressive in its own right, where the octopus really shines is using its high intelligence in conjunction with the highest stealth in the entire game. No other build possesses so many strong stealth abilities. Not only can they change the color of their body to match their surroundings, they can also change the texture of their skin so that they're almost indistinguishable from the surface they hide on. And combining these abilities with their high intelligence allows them to shapeshift and mimic other players. And if all of this fails, they've still got their trademark ink ability, which gives it a massive buff to stealth for a split second, just enough to escape and cloak again. Now I'm sure by now you're all asking where these guys belong on the tier list. If you've watched my earlier videos, you might have seen that I put them in A tier, in which case you're probably wondering how builds with such good stats and abilities can be anywhere but S tier. The problem is they've got some serious weaknesses that can keep them down. 
First and most obvious is that they have one of the lowest defense ratings of any marine build. Most mollusks have armor, but in order to maximize stealth and mobility, cephalopods have none. This means that getting caught can mean game over instantly for even the best octopus players. The second, less obvious one is that unfortunately for these builds, the total game time is relatively short, capping out at only a few years. Wow, I didn't know that they only live for like five years. That's kind of it. Wow. I thought they lived for like more like 30 or something like that. Wow, that's insane. This means that cephalopods don't get as much out of their high intelligence as they could. They can solve problems in the moment, but intelligence is most powerful when used to accumulate wisdom. High wisdom accumulation is what makes high intelligence builds truly overpowered. It's what gives elephants their unparalleled pathfinding abilities. It's what gives crows their unmatched strategic prowess, and what gives humans the ability to fine-tune their tool use. So there you have it, an extremely viable build with a multitude of high and even max stats, held back by only a few weaknesses. If you've got an aspect of the meta you'd like me to talk about, don't hesitate to comment. I've seen some awesome ideas in the comments already that I can't wait to talk about. If you're really desperate to know what I think of your favorite build, you can also subscribe to my Patreon. So if you aren't interested in hearing me talk about my channel's progress so far, this is your chance to click away. Uh, well, this... yeah, because I mean, the video's probably pretty old, so, you know, it's probably different than what it is now, but yeah. That was a really good video, and, uh, yeah. So I did not realize that their Iceman was that, was that short, but yeah, definitely Wisdom would be different than just having intelligence, because yeah, if you're... If you can solve things in that moment, it, it helps, but it's not the best thing because you would want intelligence long term, you know, um, and that would bring wisdom. So, yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. But, uh, yeah, talk to you guys in the next video. Subscribe to the channel. I want to get 1,000 subscribers by my birthday, September 13th. And uh, thank you guys again for watching the video. And uh, you can put videos down in the comment section down below that you're going to react to and I will eventually get to them and yeah talk to you guys in the next video and peace